Big up my guys, big up everybody locked in. I hope you guys are trying to keep sane because I'm losing it. I'm losing the will to live by the week. Thankfully, thankfully my smart ass didn't go to the game because I would have been standing, freezing my ass off in that away end. One of the worst grounds in the league thinking, why the fuck have I done this to myself? At least I didn't do it to myself this time. Thank the Lord. Big up to Fatter, big up to Matt Dav and all the guys who did go. You guys are better men than me, but you keep making the same mistake. I am not doing this shit anymore. Home games only until either the form picks up or until Poch fucks off. Because I'm not doing this. I'm tired of this whole trust the process narrative, but it's the worst manager that I've ever seen put on a Chelsea jacket. This guy makes constant mistakes. Constant excuses, constant lack of player development on a game-by-game -game basis. Yet, Eric Ten Hag is under way more pressure than him. The guy's in, what, 7th, 8th place? It is pathetic. It's fucking pathetic. Big up to everybody that's locked in. Hit the like button and subscribe. We've lost again. We've lost again. A couple more injuries again. So you know what the excuse is going to be when we don't do it against Sheffield United. Oh, we didn't have Sanchez. We didn't have Cucurella. We're still missing Chilwell. Where is Nkuku? What is an Nkuku? Does Nkuku even exist? Is Nkuku just a lifestyle? Is he a way of living? Because all he is is just it's a being. It's a thought process. Let me know what you think Nkuku is, because the Poch is just the biggest excuse going. I'm hearing rumours from sources that he's actually fit to play, but we're trying to manage his minutes. You can give this guy 20, 30 minutes if he is that important to us, unless he's just an excuse. Unless he's just another excuse, because when Nkuku comes in and we're str still struggling to break down low blocks, when we're still leaking goals left, right and centre and our defensive setup looks like a bag of piss... What are the excuses going to be then? That's what I want to know. All I keep hearing is injuries or I'm hearing fitness. Like we had like playing down to 60, playing 60 minutes down to 10 men when we're sitting back is something so difficult to do. When you play one game a week, one game a week, and now saying we need more signings in the January window. I see people talking about Premier League experience and everything. Premier League experience is a massive buzzword. It's a massive buzzword. Because if that's the case, then what's the point of making any signings outside of England? Why don't you just sign players and keep them in England? No, because eventually you're going to go outside the pond and you're going to go and look for experienced players. So that's not going to make any difference. It's not going to make any difference at all. I saw someone as well um, dispel the myth about us having a completely inexperienced squad. We can go through a couple of the names on here. Where is it? Where is it? Right. So we have Robert Sanchez, 26 years old, Premier League experience. Reese James, 24, Premier League experience. He's a Champions League winner. Chilwell, 26, Champions League winner. He's still around the squad. Don't think because he's injured he's not about. No, he's around. He's back in training now, so don't need to hear that one. Thiago Silva just goes without saying straight up. The guy's the oldest in the Premier League, let alone the oldest in our squad. Badi Ashil has experience, has played years at the top level. Enzo, he's played at least two years and won a World Cup. He's got enough experience. Gallagher's been in the Premier League for three seasons. He has experience. Caicedo, 22 years old, he's been here for a year or two, but he's been playing at the top level for enough that it can count for experience, it's not his first season. Sterling, 29 years old. Um, who else? You could argue Palmer because he's been in the first team for Man City for three seasons. I've already named about 10, 11 players. So this whole inexperience thing is another load of waffle. The biggest problem is our lack of coaching. The biggest problem is our poor setup. The biggest problem, Conor Gallagher played another full 90 despite doing fuck all while um, Enzo Fernandez got benched in 60 minutes and he offered way more in possession. Riddle me that one. Mudrick got taken off and he was the only one that was making anything at a certain point. Like, there was frustrating moments with Mudrick in the first half. I understand it, but in the second half, he was starting to get the cutbacks done correctly. He, he was made two or three good cutbacks into the right positions and just nobody was in there. But we take him off. Why? Why have we done that? Yet another game where Mudrick is making chances and yet another game where he gets hooked. How does that make any sense? The second goal is genuinely so...
so mind-numbing, it, it begs belief. Because how is our defensive setup to just push everybody into the six-yard box and to just leave a massive amount of space between the six-yard box and the edge of the box for anybody to just go in and catch a loose ball? Literally anybody. I think Gallagher gets dragged in. He was in the middle. Silly, but whatever. But it's not the first time that we concede goals to crosses, that we concede goals to corners. We absolutely struggle defending set pieces. And defending was at the very least our bread and butter when we weren't playing well. At least we could defend. Now we can't even do that. Now we can't even do that. Now we're sitting three points of 15th place and we're six points behind a team that had 10 points deducted. Do you know how ridiculous that is? And now we're asking for more signings. We're asking for more signs. If it's not an experienced striker, I don't want to hear it. And an experienced striker would only paper over the cracks that I'm seeing in the way that we play. Because the mentality is in the pits. The defense is leaking goals. The game management sucks. We are so petulant that that is not even funny. The attackers constantly, constantly make too many touches. Conor Gallagher was guilty. Guilty as fuck for that today. But it weren't just him. Jackson did that against um, Arsenal, did that against um, Newcastle. He's done that in numerous games, numerous games. Sterling, another one guilty of always taking too many touches. Always seems to happen. I feel like the only person who doesn't overtouch things is Mudrick. But even then, I might have mistook a time or two when he's done it. But if that's something that happens constantly and it doesn't change, then the coaching then the coaching staff either aren't aware of it, which is a big red flag, or they are aware of it and they're enabling it. And that's another red flag. Like, the, the way we're playing, all the excuses, the questions about the ownership, the questions about these players, it's a coaching problem. They're not making the decisions on the pitch. The ownership are not making the decisions on the pitch. The manager is. The manager has made crap decisions week in and week out. This week, it was Mudrikov for no reason. Kind of got forced into the Colwell left-back situation. But why he took Cucurella off as well, I don't understand. The defensive setup for the second goal is on him because that's coaching. And then I can go right back to the list of stuff that he's already done. The two forwards at home against Luton and Nottingham Forest. Gallagher right wing against Newcastle. Colwell left back. Chilwell left wing. The sassy right back. The struggles against low blocks. Even the likes of Wimbledon. Enzo in the 10. Chukumeka for Mudrick. Protecting the point against Bournemouth. And at 1-1 against Man United. Like what are we doing? What are we doing at this point? The decisions made are just ridiculous. And they are constantly, constantly coming back to haunt us. Recruitment team need to have a look at themselves for like this being the decision they had after searching for a manager for two to three months. The, uh, the team, the team need to stop being so petulant. Colwell for the first goal was a disgrace, by the way. It's got nothing to do with him being at left back. He's just ball watching. Ball watching for the sake of ball watching. And Gallagher, someone who loves to foul players, that was the one time you're meant to foul somebody. Take the yellow. And he didn't do it. Didn't do it on a transition. But you can go and clamp somebody when the team's settled and we're in, and nobody's being counter-attacked, like against Brighton last week. But when we're actually being counter-attacked, no, 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 let me not do it. The guy's decision-making is in the bin. It's in the fucking bin. We're all in the bin. This club's in the bin. Everything's just in the fucking bin. We're not developing players. The game management's inconsistent. The football is hideous. The lineups are questionable. And the press conference quotes are just inconsistent. It's just straight up embarrassing. It's, it's not good enough. It's not good enough at all. And we need to improve. Well, what is this pe press quote now? Our reality now is mid-table... Sack him. Sack him. Get rid of him tonight. Get rid of him tonight. Our reality now is mid-table and if we want to go up, we have to push ourselves. When the transfer window opens, we will see what we can do. I'm not saying I'm going to ask for more players or less players, but it is to see if perception matches reality. If he's saying our reality now is mid-table, we're doomed. We're doomed. We're doomed with this hopeless guy in charge. This guy genuinely has brought the Tottenham mentality to my football team. He is Tottenham incarnate. Get him out. 
get him out. If I wake up tomorrow and this guy is still in the job, then we're rolling another stream and we're redoing this shit all again. This is fucking outrageous. Outrageous. Get in the bin. Hit the like button, subscribe and everything. We'll be back. We'll be back tomorrow. Up the chat.